and welcome to a holiday edition of Around the Kitchen with Steve. Today I'm going to make something I've never made before, a holiday brisket. Let's get started. We want to preheat our multi-unit so that it starts with sear saute setting for five minutes to warm up with a teaspoon of olive oil. Then we're going to start with the star of the show, the brisket. It's a four pound brisket cut in half so it fits better in the unit. And then it is seasoned with a teaspoon of olive oil, rubbed all around, and then uh, I add a spice blend, which is a tablespoon of kosher salt, a tablespoon of garlic powder, and a half of a tablespoon of fresh ground pepper. And you wanna apply that to your brisket evenly and thoroughly. Once that's done and your machine is up to temp, which we have through the magics of television have already preheated and we like I said we added a teaspoon of olive oil so that way we can sear both sides of the meat prior to us putting it in the instapot feature of this device so we're going to take our two beautifully cut in half pieces of brisket put that in our device Take our other piece, put that in there as well. I'm hoping you can hear that beautiful sizzle. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to sear it on both sides for two minutes. So I'm going to set a timer for two minutes, and then we'll flip it. Alexa, please set a timer for two minutes. What's great about brisket? is that it's not just the cut of meat that you expect to get at a barbecue restaurant, or it's one that has to be in a smoker for 12 hours. It's a beautiful cut of meat that you can enjoy throughout the year. And with the Instant Pot uh, function that these devices offer, you can make this on a Saturday and then enjoy it on Sunday. Because the best part about this when we're all done, is you don't actually eat it the day you have it, you eat it the next day, so that all the flavors, all the juices, all the spices, it gets to sit in that overnight, and then when you reheat it tomorrow, or the next day, oh, it just sits in all that wonderful juice and flavor. If you wanted to do a smaller brisket, if you could get your hands on maybe a two pound brisket, you just want to adjust your uh, liquids and your seasonings accordingly because an almost four pound brisket is a very big brisket and you're going to be eating that for quite a few days but my recommendation is stock up on some rye bread you'll have some amazing sandwiches after the holidays are over i wish you could smell how wonderful the garlic and the pepper and the salt and just the beautiful smell of the meat that's coming out of here as we're searing it I'm going to go over our veggies that I'm going to add into this when the, uh, when the total searing is done. We have a bag of small carrots. If you prefer large carrots, you can get four large carrots and then just chop them up so that they're mini size. but I prefer them mini size already. We have some mushrooms. A package of mushrooms, just cut them in uh, by thirds if, and then that'll be a nice size to put in the machine. We have two red onions. We peeled the skin. We slice them so they almost look like little onion rings that aren't cooked yet. Oh, it seems my timer's ready. Alexa, timer off. We are going to flip these over to the other side. And don't you worry, I'm going to show you what these look like when we're done. So you can see how great this searing came out. As for our liquids, we have 18 ounces of stock like we've done in a previous episode. If you have that stock frozen in the freezer, just take it out, let it defrost, you're all set, you can be ready to go. And then we have 14 ounces of tomato paste, excuse me, whole tomato sauce with no seasonings, just pure tomatoes. So when you have big cuts of meat like this, don't expect that just because you flip it on one side and then you flip it on the other side that it's going to be completely brown. You might have to pick a piece up, sear one side just to make sure it's all nice and brown. 
And it seems I forgot to set my timer, so I'm going to ask Alexa to set me a timer for one minute. Alexa, please set me a timer for one minute, just to make sure that we don't oversear these. The whole house is just getting this like a beautiful beef aroma that's coming in, and it's really wonderful. Um, again, you can do this as a Hanukkah meal, as something you want to do for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, or it's just a delicious meal at the cold months where you can make in advance and have yourself a nice set meal for a few nights that you and your family can enjoy. So I'm actually going to head over to my phone so I can start showing you, hi everyone, how our meat is looking. As you can see, it has a nice color on the outside. As you can see, there's still some red there. So what I'm going to do is when we our timer's up, I'm just going to sear that little section and a little bit there just to make sure everything's set to go. All right. It looks like our timer is done. I'm going to step away for a second, finish searing these pieces of meat, and then we'll add in our vegetables and set our instant pressure cooker. All right, as you can see, our meat is completely seared. I've removed it from the device and turned it off so it's no longer on that sear setting on high. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in our vegetables. I'm going to start with some carrots. followed by our mushrooms and onions. Ooh, there's some. Better make sure they get in there. You want to separate everything in there. We are mixing everything up. Separate some pieces, mix everything around. Next thing we are going to do is we are going to add our liquids. So here is our stock, our vegetable stock. Here is our tomato. And then what we want to do is add both pieces back in so that way they can sit on our vegetable and liquid bath. Lastly, we're going to add a bunch of thyme. Oh, look, there's two mushrooms I missed. A bunch of thyme onto the top, about 20 sticks or so. We are going to add some more at the end for garnishing along with some parsley. But now that we have that in there, we are going to put our electric pot seal on. There we are. Our seal is set. We want to put our seal vent option onto seal. We want to turn our device on. We want to choose the pressure setting. We want to choose high and we want it for an hour and 20 minutes. So you might feel like that's a long time, but this is a really, really tough cut of meat that takes time to break down. And that hour and 20 minutes sure does beat 12 hours in a smoker. So when our time is up, I will be back. We will naturally release the air out. And when done, we'll crisp up the brisket by doing a little air frying as well. All right, see everyone in an hour and 20. All right, we have less than five seconds left. We are going to press stop. Now it's on the keep warm setting. So what we're going to do is we're also going to vent our air. Here's the coolest part.
once that's done, we'll take the top off. And we're going to let the meat soak in there with the top off for 30 minutes. Alright, it took almost 4 minutes, but we have released all the pressure. We're going to open our lid. And let's see what we have in there. Oh wow, that looks fantastic. Alright, so what we're going to do is we just want to check to make sure that it's fork tender. My fork fits in there, but my fork is not pulling it apart. That's exactly what we want. It said to leave it in here for 30 minutes. Once that's done, we'll skim any fat that's on the top off. Then allow the meat to cool. Put it into a big old giant Tupperware. Put all this beautiful juices on top and vegetables. And then tomorrow, we'll air fry it right before we have it for dinner. So our 30 minutes of sitting in its own juices are complete. I've turned the machine off. And as soon as this has cooled down enough, I will remove the brisket, put it into a large Tupperware, put all the juice and vegetables and fresh herbs on top, put it in the fridge, and like I said before, we'll take it out tomorrow and fry it for dinner. Through the magics of television and the internet, it is now the next day. So as you can see, here is our meat that has been sitting in the juices overnight. I pulled it, and now I'm going to get it ready for our air fryer. The first thing you want to do is turn it on. We want to set it to air crisp mode. We want to set the temperature to 400. Then we're going to let it run and preheat for seven minutes. And then once these seven minutes are up, we're going to put the meat in there. So we'll be back in a flash. Okay, our timer is just finishing up on our preheat. We're gonna allow our unit to cool down. We're gonna lift the top up. We're going to drop our meat in there. Hopefully we can get it all to fit on one rack. If not, we'll do it twice. Yep, it looks like we're gonna have to do it twice. So we'll do these pieces first, and then we'll do that one next. But through the magics of television and editing, everything will be done when you see it. So we're gonna set this again on air crisp. We're gonna set the temperature to 400. We're gonna set the timer for 15 minutes. All right, when we're done, we'll be able to have that It'll be set aside, and then we'll also see this piece complete too. So we'll see you back in a little while. So a little tip. I checked my meat about halfway through just to see what was going on. As you can see, there's still about a little more than seven and a half minutes left. And to me, that looks done. So I wanted to pass this tip along to you anytime you're checking anything. So I decided to check how it was doing about halfway through, and to me, that looks complete. So I'm glad I checked, and you should do that anytime you're using a recipe. Perhaps it was designed for 15 minutes for the full amount of meat to be in there, but since I really couldn't position it correctly, it, everything looks done at this point. So just a little FYI, check on your, uh, anytime you're using the air fryer, check on your stuff about halfway through. That'll make things uh, better in the long run so you don't end up with super dried out food. So I'm gonna take this out and put my next piece in and I'll show you everything when it's done. Okay. Our time is up. We are going to check on that piece of meat. Ooh, that looks fantastic. I'm gonna pull that out, put it with the tent, then take the rack out and add in my liquid and vegetables. We're gonna then use that in our saute function. And then we're gonna reduce it by half, take about 25 minutes, continuously, uh, not continuously, but you know, keeping an eye on it, stirring it often. And when that's done, we'll be able to have our meat sliced and our sauce and veggies on top. All right, so we've removed our rack, removed our meat. Our meat is tented, or my poor attempt at a tent. We are gonna set our device 
to sear. We're gonna set that sear and press start. And then we are going to take some of our liquid from earlier. We're gonna pour that into our device. Then I'm gonna get my other batch. And then I'm gonna just keep an eye on it, stir it. This is gonna go about 20, 25 minutes. What you're looking to is have the sauce amount reduced by about half. And then when that's done, we'll be able to add it on top of our meat and we'll be ready for dinner. All right, so I'll see everyone in about 20, 25 minutes. All right, so our sauce has reduced. It is way down, our veggies. So we're just gonna scoop it out, put it over our meat, which I sliced earlier. You just wanna put that over there. Make sure that this beautiful meat gets this amazing sauce. Make sure you get all the veggies in there. And then if you like, just some parsley and fresh thyme on the top to garnish and you're all done. From my family to yours, happy holidays and happy new year. And we'll see you in 2021.